just remember that this guy, Bernie Sanders, this guy wants your property. He thinks that he knows how to spend it, how to use it, how to allocate it better than you do. Step six, think through gifting options, your spouse, your children, your charities, whatever you wanna to give to. But just know that dynasty trust is liable to be, some type of dynasty trust should probably be included here. And then I'll just leave it at this. Whatever you do, please don't wait to plan. Time is of the essence here. Albert Einstein, you heard of him? He was considered one of the smartest people in the world of the 20th century, maybe of all time. And wise old Albert had to say one thing about taxes. He said, the hardest thing in the world to understand is taxes. Now, he was right. And our speaker believes he was right because um, our speaker had not given his 10 minute talk at that time when Albert was alive. And why is, why is the subject of taxes so important? Well, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we didn't work this hard to give all the money away to the government, no matter what state or country you live in. Usually in the US, we think of taxes with the date April 15th. But today you're gonna to hear another number. So grab a pen and just write this down because it's even more important than 415, whatever year. And that number is 230. When our next speaker talks about the number 230, lean forward and listen carefully because it's very important. You'll learn why. And when you hear this talk about the big changes coming in the estate and gift tax laws and how they're gonna impact you and your families for generations, this talk may be one of the most important ones you hear all year long. And knowing what you can do, you can easily save a quarter million dollars in the long run just on taxes alone. Now, every one of our next speaker's clients is ahead of the game, just through preparation. And what's gonna happen is for 38 years, our next speaker and his team have, has held hands with over 317 of his clients who have sold their businesses and protected their wealth by reducing their taxes. One client saved, wait for it, wait for it, 40 million dollars in taxes from one strategy alone. Our next speaker is a lawyer. He's a, he's a wealth manager, a certified exit planner, and he knows what he's talking about. Lean forward, listen closely. Remember the number 230, and the name of this talk is Leaving Your Legacy. Please help me welcome Randy Law. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you today. Um, the purpose of my talk today is to introduce you, to alert you about a bill proposed by Bernie Sanders. Um, that bill is intended to uh, amend the gift, uh, estate tax, and income tax rules in this country that we've operated under for a long time. Um, I talked to uh, Tony Rose just recently and some others about this, and and it looks like the bill has a decent chance of passing, but certainly we hope that it will pass with um, amendments to it because it's, it's pretty draconian, unfortunately. So if you're not already ready and already doing this planning, um, you're behind and we need to get started here. So um, I'd like to, uh, to talk to you about this through the th sort of the lens, if you will, of, of how we view building wealth and, and transferring wealth to the next generation. Exit planning as we see it is, is the way that we, the way we approach this. Um, and so for everybody, oops, there we go. We want you to be able to bulletproof your exit through this, through this vein of how we see it. We're gonna talk to you just briefly, give you an overview of it, and then we'll get to the particulars of this bill. Uh, step one, we want you to build a sellable company. And the reason I want you to build a sellable company is because the company is worth more and it, it, it is the, the way that most Americans create wealth that becomes generational kinds of wealth. Secondly, we want you to strategize to protect your business and your family from tragedy because unfortunately tragedies happen in this world and we want your wealth protected for your family when things go bad. Thirdly, 
um, we would strategize and create ways to maximize the use of the business for the family and, uh, and make the, basically make the business work for the family as opposed to you just working for it. Fourthly, uh, we want you to sell or transition the business successfully because everybody's gonna exit one day, we wanna do it well. And this is the way that you can realize your life's work, if you will. And then fifth area is the idea that we would like to turn um, your business wealth into generational wealth. This is, hey, this is to remind us that this is serious, that this, this bill is actually a threat to your ability to create wealth and to maintain it to the next generations. So let's go through the, the pieces here. The big point is that I think the window could be closing on gift and estate planning opportunities that we've used pretty much for my whole career. And I say there's 230 days left, that would be 1231 20, 2021. That is, you need to be finished with your planning um, before this date because we expect that the date of the new, new law, if it passes here, will be January 1st, 2022. So um, there are five basically proposed changes that I wanna talk about. The first one is the estate tax exemption. Now, I'm gonna to try to go slow here with for you on all this stuff because I want you to keep up. This is, it's pretty important stuff. Currently the exemption is $23.4 million per couple. In other words, in America here, we have the ability to transfer or during lifetime or at death, $23.4 million tax-free. And, and that's a good thing. The proposed exemption though, is to reduce that 23.4 million down to only $7 million per couple. In other words, your estate taxes would start on the first dollar above 7 million instead of the first dollar above 23.4 million. So if you did the math in your head, this is a approximately $16 million reduction in the amount that you can transfer to your heirs tax-free. That's a lot. Change number two that's proposed is the estate tax rate is proposed to change. Currently, the estate tax rate is 40% roughly on excess over the 23 million. So once you have transferred 23 million to your heirs, the next dollars above that are taxed at 40% roughly. The proposed rate though is 50%. So it's 10% higher on the rate, but remember this, it's applied on the excess over just 7 million. So it it's, turns into a huge tax increase on your estate. Thirdly, the annual gifts. These are called annual exclusion gifts. Currently, under the law, you can gift $15,000 to as many people as you want every single year. No, no limit. The proposal, I'm sorry, I forgot. I was going to ask Uncle Joe if he might want to give each of us $15,000 because we won't pay tax on it and neither will he. It'll just be a gift between friends. Hope, hope you're li listening out there, Joe. Uh, okay. The proposed annual exclusion gift amount is, is proposed to be reduced from 15 down to $10,000 per year. And it's only going to apply to two people, not as many people as you want to give to, but just two. Step number four, stepped up basis. Under the current law, there are no capital gains on inherited assets, zero capital gains, that is. The proposed law is that heirs would be taxed on the capital gains at your death. So you, when, you're, when your kids inherit from you, uh, you would actually pay a capital gains. I'm not talking about estate tax, but capital gains on the, the gains in the property. I'm going to give you an example. Let's assume that your dad 30 years ago bought this little place um, up on the hill for $100,000 because it happened to be overlooking Santa Cruz Beach. Now, 
that $100,000 has grown into, let's say a million dollars in value. So again, simple math here, you bought it for $100,000 and now it's worth a million. Under current law, when you inherit that million dollar house from your dad, there is no tax due, there's no capital gains to pay on it. But the proposed law would tax that $900,000 gain would become taxable at your death. Your heirs would owe $360,000 nine months from the date of your death. It's pretty draconian. Number five, the long-term capital gains rate is, is intended to change. Currently, the capital gains rate is 20%. That means if I buy a stock for $10, let's say, and I keep it a couple of years and then I decide to sell it and I sell it for 20 bucks, that means I've got a $10 gain. So that would mean then that my capital gains rate today would be 20%. I'd pay $2 of that $10 gain. The proposed, proposed rate for capital gains though is 40%. So now the $10 gain I have on the sale of my stock, I've got to pay four bucks on. So what's the impact of this, this whole bill scheme, if you will, should it pass in its current form? Well, it could be how I see it, the end of generational wealth, because it will eliminate um, a lot of the tools we have. It'll make it harder to, to build wealth and it'll make it harder to keep wealth to the next generations. So, and I also think it can be a hollowing out of the middle class businesses because the super rich people, they already have this, this work done. They've got their stuff in dynasty trusts. They're, they're finished with all this. It is those in the middle class, the farmers and those of you who have businesses that will have to pay huge estate taxes potentially on your assets so that um, there is less to transfer and many of the businesses won't be able to be transferred intact. So what can I do now? Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video and I wanna let you know that I have a new book that's come out and if you'd like to get it absolutely free, there's a link below in the description or you can wait till the end of this video or you can simply go to joesfreebook.com and you can get a copy there. Step one, you need to start planning now. And if you can't get it going yourself, you need to hire somebody to manage this with, for you. Secondly, you need a competent estate planning lawyer. And let me tell you, uh, people are lining up to get in to, to the competent estate planning lawyers now. So you need to get in line too, or else you're gonna end up having to work with somebody like this dude who doesn't know what he's doing. Third, hire an appraiser. Appraiser, good appraisers, are even more rare than good tax lawyers. And so the lines to use these guys is, can be long and many of the people will not get their work done in time. So I encourage you to get going. Step four, consider taking long-term capital gains now. Um, talk to your CPA and see whether or not there's some gains that you should take at a 20% rate before the rate goes up to 30 or 40%. Step five, Call your congressman, your senators to oppose this, this bill. Bernie calls it the 99.5% bill, but from my perspective, it should be called the 0.5% bill because what it does, it protects the super rich guys that have the huge companies. It protects them from having small and medium-sized businesses now to be able to grow into those kind of, into those kind of businesses for competition. So um, I think the bill is completely misnamed. Just remember that this guy, Bernie Sanders, this guy wants your property. He thinks that he knows how to spend it, how to use it, how to allocate it better than you do. Step six, think through gifting options, your spouse, your children, your charities, whatever you want to give to. But just know that dynasty trust is liable to be some type of dynasty trust should probably be included here. And then I'll just leave it at this. Whatever you do, please don't wait to plan. Time is of the essence here. Thank you. Okay. All right, there you go. Am I on? You are on. Good. Well, my friend, I've got 12 things you did great and just two suggestions.
<laughs> so this, this was a marvelous presentation. And you're going to see that in the discussion we're going to have. I think there's going to be a lot of questions, not about what you said, but about what they can do. So yeah. let's look at some of the things that worked. You, you started full face, and this is something you need to do. And I should have reminded you earlier that these comments for the speaker are really for you in the audience, that if this was your presentation, so when you're using a virtual presentation and you're using slides, don't open with your first slide. We have to connect with Randy first. So we had a minute and six seconds of you full face on that screen, looking at that beautiful smile of yours and listening to that wonderful, soft, kind, wise voice. That was number two. Number three, you put the visuals there and the words in a box. Don't put visuals over an image because you can't see all the words. You numbered the ideas so it was easy for us to find. And then you had December 31st, 2021. We talked about that on the phone and making the 230 days kind of a mystery. And Alex had it in the introduction. And then you hit us with that date. Then you had the constant image of change for each of the points that you had. And that's a technique that you should use. When you're doing something, use that same image each time. The single thought on a slide, there was no confusion here. So many financial advisors put all these charts and graphs together. This was so easy to follow. You had humor in there with Joe giving us 15,000. That was pretty good. The other thing that was very clever is the current rates were in green backgrounds. The changes were in red backgrounds. Go, stop, good, bad, very creative. Number 10, simple examples, easy to follow. Dad selling the house, stock sale going up. Great examples that we could understand. And number 11, at eight minutes and 27 seconds, you said, what does this really mean? The end of generational wealth. And there was your impact close to get us to do something. And everything you asked us to do, hopefully, as you watch this presentation, you said, well, I can do that. I can do that. And he told you, don't wait. And he showed you those lines. So this was a great example of a very clear presentation Two suggestions. Step number five, which was the generational wealth, didn't come in until two minutes and 49 seconds. We have a 10 minute talk. So 25% of that message was spent setting it up. Suggestion, put that up a little earlier. And then I'm gonna spank you. We've worked on many presentations together. No. Thank you. <laughs> Don't end with thank you. You just saved us all of this money in taxes. Why would you thank us? Here's the great example. As you're listening to this, imagine as you're heading home from this meeting, wherever you are, or going out for dinner tonight, you stop at a light, there's a homeless person. They want food and they're begging. You rush out of your car, you hand them a $100 bill. You head back to your car. And as you're about to get in your car, you turn around and say to the homeless person, thank you. They would think you are nuts. You just gave them $100. You just gave us all these great ideas. The audience thanks you. Don't thank them because then they're thinking, boy, Randy's gonna make a lot of money on us. We're gonna hire him. We're gonna be able to exit plan it. Okay, I'm glad you're reacting that way. Now let's open it up to your questions, comments, and thoughts. This was a great example of how to make a 10 minute talk impactful. So Tana, I'm gonna give you first reign there. You take charge and who would like to make a comment? And I'm gonna look at our group here and see who's, we already got one here with Laura's gonna be Next on that, so you can kind of come up. Okay, who do we got, Darna? We've got Miss Renee Nelson and okay, then Tim Kahn, and then we'll go with the person there in the room. Okay. Hi, Renee. Hi, Joel. Randy, great, presenta great presentation. Really dynamic information, and it's going to impact almost every American right now. So thank you for putting together a timely presentation. Uh, question, is there a way to put the real estate into a family trust so it gets passed generation to generation and doesn't get that tax consequence? Yeah, yeah part, of the, part of the reason that I'm trying to get everybody to, to look into this quickly is because under current law, um, you could create, uh, there are different kinds of dynasty trusts. Um, one of them is, is called a slat, which is a basically one one spouse creates um, a trust for the other spouse and children but i don't want to get into too much detail about this the point is dynasty trusts will work and another thing which i didn't talk about which is also intended to change 
is the discounts that we usually take on minority interest gifts and also um, uh, not uh, non unmarketable gift and also um, what's the other one it just left me um, anyway there's two discounts that we get um, that we take off so in other words if I was going to transfer a piece of real property worth 10 million dollars and my husband owned half of it and my wife owned the other half or whatever you know then uh, if you have less than half of that so in other words, let's say a kid's got 1% and each of you have 49.5. When you're at 49.5%, you're a minority owner. So you get a minority discount and a non-marketable discount because it's not traded on an exchange. And so then you can take get a discount, maybe that'd be 35%, so that your $10 million gift into your trust turns out to be only, um, what is that, 66,000, I mean, 6,750,000. Mm you follow because you got a big discount. So there's a lot of planning that goes into this. Also, if you've got businesses that you're going to transfer into this, the appraisal, both on real estate side and also the appraisal on the business interest side becomes a very important piece because you may have to defend it to the IRS. You don't want to do it yourself. Okay. Don't leave Renee. You didn't follow the rules. Give us your 3G card. I know you're in real estate. So tell us what oh, you I'm do. Sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm Renee Nelson. I'm a commercial real estate boutique owner that helps high net worth individuals buy and sell commercial real estate. I give my clients strategy to avoid paying capital gains. I get them results by guiding them through the process and avoiding pitfalls. And I want help doubling my revenue and attracting high net worth individuals. Now we understand the question even better. All right, Laura, come on up. Renee, are you in... Um... Are you in Phoenix? Uh, Oregon. I'm in Oregon. Okay. All right. Excellent. Hey, Randy. My Hi. name is Dr. Laura Schwalach, and my husband and I have a uh, group called Business Builders. It's a mentor mastermind group that helps business owners to double and triple their business without working harder. And one of the things that we are working on is a wealth mastery uh, for our members. And so your talk was completely relevant to what we're up to. My question for you, Randy, is with, is it possible to create, like, for example, keeping in line with generational wealth, is it possible to create a charitable organization, perhaps for each child that each child runs and is property or money, whatever it might be, stocks that are put into that charitable organization, does the estate tax still apply to those? Okay. Uh, I will say I'm not a quote unquote expert on um, charitable planning per se, but, I, but um, if you create your own foundation as an example that the kids could run, um, if once we'd like to transfer assets into those kinds of, of uh, vehicles that have capital gains in them that we're going to have to pay if we sold so that if we give it to the charity, we never end up paying those capital gains and the government never gets them. Just the whole value goes into the, into the trust. Um, so yes, they're deductible. Uh, they reduce your estate. They, they're not included in your estate when you die. And then, uh, you know, depending on how you write the, ch the charter for it and what it's supposed to accomplish and then how, whatever decisions your kids make, uh, the charitable trust side can be a way. And there are simple versions of that, like donor advised funds, if you've ever heard of that term, which is a way that you can, you can create, you can put money or assets into a donor advised fund without setting up a big entity and kind of go under the umbrella of another one. And then you can just direct it over time and you can leave that your kids in charge of directing how the money is paid. That's a really cheap version. The other one is a pretty expensive one. The foundation. Yes. So we can talk about that. Thanks for the question though, Laura. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. We got another group coming up. Patty and Robbie. Hi. So Patty Hi. has a question to ask, but she has to have me. So sometimes there's a state trust. And then sometimes there's partner, what do you do? What you partner you trust? Thought? So here's you want. Who are you? Neil came for talking oh, you want about us to the do card. Go, oh, she has a question. You want to do? No, here's, no. You got to tell us who you are. So I'm Robbie Stahl. This is Patricia Stahl. 
And you want me to go? Into no, it? sit down and come back. Go get your card. <laughs> <laughs> no, then you bring it up there. Those are the rules. Now I can do that with Robbie. I can't beat him up, but he's been my trainer for 20 years. So we go way back. We spent a lot of time together, 2000 sessions together plus. So get your card, get ready. Time to take over. We're not wasting time here. Let's go over to Scott with Freedom Street Partners. And then I think Tim Kahn, if you want to turn on your video to let us know you're there and you've got your question ready, but Scott, let's take it away. All right, Scott All right. And, and Tim, and then Robbie and Pat. I'm going to make sure I follow the rules because I don't want to get told to leave the stage. That oh, you day. better. So Scott Danner, uh, Freedom Street, uh, Genius member since 2018. I've got Freedom Street Partners that serves clients and advisors. Uh, we specialize in succession and acquisition, average advisor, 62 years old. So we do a lot of work uh, in that field. We give financial advisors life and wealth optimization. We get them freedom for their next chapter in life. And um, ultimately, this is more of a, of a statement and in that I've had the pleasure of working with Randy directly. Uh, we met a couple years ago at Genius Network. We went to dinner, had a great time. We've been working together to build value in our practice in our enterprise. And um, Randy, not only did he deliver great information, but he's also just a great collaborator. We don't always have all the, he doesn't always have all the answers and I don't always have all the answers, but working together has been a really, really big benefit for my business, for my partners, for all the advisors that we work with. And I just think it's important sometimes when we do the work with people in Genius Network, that we take a moment to tell everyone how great the person we're working with is. And uh, I just wanted to kind of give Randy a round of applause and also a huge uh, um, celebration because he's done great wonders for us in our company. So thanks. Thank, thank you, Scott. That's so kind of you. <laughs> well, this is the whole thing of connection. Scott, so much fun. That's such a great thing that you've added, Scott. So thank you for bringing that up. That's the key. All right, Tanya, is it Tim Kahn next? It sure is. Right, Tim, yeah. come up, my friend. All right, thank you, Randy, for uh, a great 10 minute talk. I'm Tim Kahn, I've been a Genius member, member Network member since 2017, I believe it was. Um, I've got a janitorial franchise marketing company. Uh, we sell franchises and uh, help them grow their business to whatever size they desire. And what we're looking for is um, ways to generate more franchise leads and prospects to uh, sell more franchises. Uh, my question today is, um, because we're a privately held company, obviously, uh, S-Corp. Uh, would it make sense um, for estate planning purposes to transfer some stock to my two kids that are involved in the business? Because obviously the value of the company will only go up over the years, which would then create a, a larger taxable event for them. Yeah, do you, have, do you have children that aren't in the business? Can I ask that first? No, I've got two kids, both of them are involved in the business. Both of them are in the business, okay. Yes. So is it your desire to transition the business to the kids or just the wealth? The question is, is it their desire for me to transfer the business to them? Because, you know, they're involved in it now, but will they want to be in five years or 10 years? You know, that, that's a, a in, big question. Yeah. In general, the answer to that it has to do with, um, you know, what you're worth, what your cash flow. Because when you give away S-Corp stock, as you know, you're giving away the income that, that's associated with that when you're paying out your distributions. So to the extent that you have plenty for you and your wife, then it makes really good sense to start, um, you know, pushing down some of that to the kids, give them a sense of ownership, a sense of family, a sense of, um, it just changed the dynamic of the relationship in a really positive way, frankly, but don't, but don't give away control. No. <laughs> just to be All real right, thank, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Do we have another, we have one here local, but we'll go to you, Tanya, if there's another waiting. Would go with the one local and then let's bring All right, the Robbie, come on up, Patty. They got their 3G card now. Mr. Yeah. Joe, you're so bossy. Seriously. <laughs> okay, this is not my computer. This is Patty's. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got a fitness company that produces world-class fitness training services, equipment, and products that gives people a breakthrough knowledge of how to train their body based on their own unique biomechanics that gets them the most badass body they could possibly have by elevating their quality of life, decreasing their feeling of age by 20 years and achieving everything more easily with less pain and restriction. And we also are heavily involved in multiple types of investments. And really that has to do with our question. Here's our question. So, okay, 
bear, bear with me, okay? Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, we have all these stocks, we have all these cryptos, we have all these wallets. So I'm thinking, what if we move the current assets that we have, stocks, crypto, into a place like a safe haven that we can don't I, pay taxes? Can I add to that? So you her question is really it. based on, we're talking about estate planning, but what about now? What can you do? I don't know if that's even your area of expertise is, you know, what can you do now? What can we do now with wealth we're building and creating to help offset taxation? Yeah, it, it's, un, unfortunately, it's, I, I can't give specific advice without, you know, actually reviewing your case, but but we do, I, I would encourage you to, to chase that some because um, working inside the business to try to make, I talked about, you know, have making the business work for you for the benefit of you now. So there are some tax benefits within the, the business that a lot of times people don't use because they don't know they're available. Um, so, you know, you've got to find some competent help to help you design this, but there are ways to minimize the taxes currently, as well as to minimize estate taxes in the future um, and capital gains for that matter too. So, um, and the tax part of this is it's, it's just the, you know, the one piece of it. There are all the other pieces that, the, the point of my talk really is that all these other pieces, they all impact each other. It's not about just, oh, let's, you know, solve the tax issue because if you're, if you're only trying to solve one issue, many times you're creating others that you don't really realize. It's the law of unintended consequences, you know. So having, having somebody work with you that has a macro view of, of everything that you have, where it is, why it's there, how it's working, how your business functions, um, you know, what your kid situation is, it's all very much tied together. Yeah, we have, we have that, but I was just curious if you had some unique strategies around like offshore stuff and that type of thing to. Yeah. Um, we, we do do, we do work with some lawyers that do offshore planning work. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I apologize, but I, I can't give specific, sure. you know, stuff when I don't know it. So. Um, and the capital gain, the forty percent, is in any amount, or is it? Yeah, split? well, the the capital gain is proposed to be forty percent. Now, it may be that um, it'll be reduced. Maybe they'll get twenty eight percent, or maybe they'll get thirty two percent. But um, the proposal by by Bernie is a forty percent capital gains rate from the twenty percent that we have right now. So my my potential advice here for you, and I wanted you to check with your CPA is whether or not there's some assets that, that you don't really intend to keep long-term. And if you could sell them this year versus next year, this year should be the year, if that makes sense. I, I've sold some of my own properties and stuff that I didn't want to hold long-term because I didn't want to deal with the, in, the possible increases in these capital gains rates. So I've sold off a couple of things this year. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Randy. And especially for demonstrating the fact the best answer sometimes is, I don't know. And that's what you did to that one question. Okay, I hope you found that video awesome and useful. So if you want to get a free copy of my book, I want you to click here. And if you want to watch some more videos that will be useful and awesome, click here. Go ahead. Get over here. Do it now. Come on. Thank you. Watch them.